This week on Trade Archery 101, we're going to look at the Lancaster Classic from this year. Hey everybody, welcome to Trade Archery 101. Greg here. All right, Lancaster Classic. It's the largest indoor target archery event in the eastern half of the United States. This past year, they had almost had 2,700 people attend the event. That's awesome. Good job, Lancaster. Now, Lancaster does not have a trad archery class. Why? Because we don't show up. Plain and simple. Not enough of us show up to justify having a division. Now, they do have two divisions we can compete in. Beer bow and recurve. Now, recurve is not what you think. Recurve is actually what they call the Olympic archery class. And I would not suggest entering that division for two reasons. One is this guy right here, Brady Ellison. You ain't beating him. I ain't beating him. Very few people beat him. Only elite level archers beat him. So there's no way you're going to be competitive. And the other one, the second reason, is they get to use sights. I don't care how awesome of a trad archer you are, shooting pie plate groups or whatever you can do, you're not going to beat a person with sights. It's just a fact, all right? You're not even going to be competitive. So we're not even going to talk about the recurves. But the bare bow class, that's the one we're going to talk about. The bare bow class is open to all types of bows, and you'll see all types of bows in it, from ILF rigs, wooden bows, one piece, two piece, three pieces, homemade bows, stick bows, and even an occasional horse bow. Now the method of shooting is pretty wide open. You'll see split finger, three under, two under, and even people shooting with their thumb. You'll see the three types of arrows, wood, aluminum, and carbon. You see people using instinctive, gap, split vision, string walking, and Lord knows what else. And this is a great opportunity for us. We can look at what the top archers are doing and draw some observations from it. Now these aren't really conclusions because they're not scientifically backed. These are just observations, but they can still help us. All right. So we're going to look today at the top 12 archers, male and female. We're going to look at their bows, their arrows, and their shooting style, their form, different aspects of it. And we're going to see what they have in common, what they don't, and we'll be able to make some observations on that. So up first, Let's look at the 12 archers and look at their bows and the limbs they're using. All right, everybody have it. There are the top 12 archers. Congratulations to those. So what were my observations? Well, here they are. ILF bows ruled. In this competition, there is little doubt that the ILF star bow absolutely dominates. One of the reasons for this is its tunability. You can make very fine corrections or adjustments to your setup with an ILF bow, more so than you can with a one-piece or three-piece takedown bow. The other reason is their weight. ILF bows in general weigh more, and yes, that weight is important. To be clear, I'm not talking about the draw weight, but rather the actual weight of the bow itself. The heavier the bow, the more inertia it has. Now, inertia is the resistance to change of direction. A wooden bow is more likely to be affected by plucking, 
loss of back tension, and etc., than an ILF bow, and this is due to its weight. Now, what this difference in weight means, for an example, and it may not be totally accurate, but a one inch miss with an ILF bow could be a five inch miss with a wooden bow. Finally, I'm not saying a one piece bow can't be competitive. Personally, I think they can. And in fact, I'm on a quest to prove that. What I do know from shooting with ILF rigs is that we have a much smaller margin for error. Hoyt had the preferred riser. This is not an exact, because like I said earlier, I have no clue about ILF gear. As I said, I can tell a CD riser just by its unique design, but a Hoyt or a Gilio, they all look the same to me. Hoyt, as far as I can tell, had seven archers using their riser, while Gilio had three, and CD had two. Half of the 12 archers used a Hoyt limb. Uka and Gilio had three archers each using their limbs. All right, everybody, so what can I take from all those observations? All, will often two of them. Well, I'll tell you, there's one observation you can take from the bows, and that is if you want to be competitive, you have to use an ILF rig. Not one single horse bow, not one long bow, not one wooden bow even made it in the finals. And that's not just this year, this is multiple years. So if you want to be competitive, you got to use an ILF rig. All right, up next is arrows. Um, we're going to look at a whole bunch of things, but we're going to look at types, um, type of feathers, the fletching, number of uh, feathers. We're going to look at thick, whole bunch of stuff, all right? So again, let's look at these 12 archers, and this time pay attention to their arrows. Carbon arrows were used by every archer in the final shootout. I think nothing more needs to be said about this. This is an area I cannot say for sure. I'm going by the video, and it appears to me that nine archers used thick target arrows, two archers used micro target arrows, and both of those who used those arrows came from Europe and Olympic archery. And finally, it appears one person used a regular diameter arrow. So why the thick arrows? I know several people who use them and they say they gain four to five points a match with them. You know it may not sound like much but at that level that can be huge. 10 out of 12 archers used feathers. The only archers not using feathers were the two archers who used micro diameter arrows and like I said in the other one they came over from Olympic archery and they used veins. Nine out of 12 archers used three fletch. The overall winner, however, did use a four fletch setup. And this begs a couple questions. Is there a difference? I understand the logic behind it. Those that use four fletch are trying to grab as much air as possible for corrections. With that said, how much more can you correct in that minuscule amount of time it takes an arrow to travel 20 yards? Also, the odds are they are using some highly tuned arrows. So wouldn't four fletch be more of a hindrance causing more drag? To be clear, 
I use for Fletch. The reason I did it was because it shows up better on camera. I did not and have not noticed any difference in my shooting between the two. And since I do not know why they chose to do that, I'm not even going to attempt to guess at their reasons. So this here is a personal preference with nothing that I can use to substantiate why. From what I can tell, 10 of the 12 archers used a straight fletch. I could not tell if they were offset, so this observation is very conditional. But I can say helical was not a preferred choice. 7 out of 12 archers used a shield cut. 5 used parabolic. Not sure what can be inferred here by this. It could just be a simple statistic. This one was so hard to determine. Camera angles, distance, they can really make things look different. So this here, take it with a grain of salt. Of the 12 archers, four seem to be using four inch feathers, six seem to be using three inch feathers, and two were using what appears to be two inch veins. All right, everybody, there you have it. Now, again, there is one, one clear conclusion, and that is carbon arrows rule, all right? Everybody loves to say this is just as good, but all 12 used carbon. That's pretty strong, and I believe they did last year, too. So that is a very good, tight set of information. So carbon arrows with an ILF bow are the way to go. All right, brings us up to form. Now, form is going to be tough because this is very subjective. And I'm going to look at a, several aspects like what handed are they, how they hold the string, their stances. And we're going to look at the elbow position. Is, is it in line? Is it high? Is it low? Is the elbow in line, past, or short? All right. So let's look at those 12 archers again. And this time, let's look at those things I talked about. You won't be able to see stances but you can tell the others. Just like society, with 12 archers, only one was left-handed. Who knows what this means? Again, probably just another statistic. 10 of the 12 archers shot 3 under. The other two, they shot 2 under. No split-fingered archers made it to the finals. The reason for this goes hand-in-hand hand with aiming. Shooting 3 under brings the arrow closer to the eye, and this alone helps your mind figure out what's going on. I believe every shooter here was aiming and the preferred method was string walking. But since I didn't speak to each archer, I can only guess at what they were doing. But this much is for sure. Instinctive archers rarely place in national level tournaments. This one is purely subjective. For what do you call a deep hook? I broke it down into three groups. Deep regular and shallow. Using that, I think it breaks down evenly. Four archers in each group. It really goes to show you that the hook is about what feels right and what works for you. So let's look at these archers again and look at the variety of their hooks.
This is another subjective call. I had to watch the video over and over trying to figure out what stance to use. And for this again, I broke it down into three stances. The open, the closed, and the reverse. The open is where your feet look like this. The closed is where your feet are even in line with each other, front and back. And the reverse is the opposite of the open. I seen six archers using the open and six archers using the closed. This is another great example of using what you feel comfortable with. This again depends on what you call high, inline, or low. The inline position was by far the preferred with eight archers using it. Three archers definitely had what I would call a high elbow. This is important because it shows that the high elbow position is good enough to get an archer to this level of shooting. But a low one where your elbow's below your shoulder, nobody had it. So there's something going on here. I just can't prove it. All right, this is another elbow one. The other one was about height. On this, I'm talking about how far back they drew their bows. Every archer's elbow was in line with their shoulder. The forearm is what I was looking at. The forearm. Not one person drew where the forearm was pointing backwards. No one drew where their forearm was at an angle going away from their body. All of them were nicely in line. And this goes to show of all the options they had. This, ILF bows and carbon arrows were the only unanimous choices made. That alone speaks volumes about how important that elbow position is. The big conclusion from form is with the elbow, as I stated in the last observation. Every single archer had their elbow in line with his shoulder. Not one had it forward, not one had it back. They did, however, have it at different heights, but all 12 had it the same way. This tells you that each archer recognized that importance. All right, what can we get from form? Well, I can tell you there's one conclusion. Again, one conclusion. And that is this, we've seen variation, but every single archer had that arm in line. Nobody had it short. Right? Nobody had it passed. They were all in line. So that's something you can take. If everybody's doing it, that's telling you something. All right, so my final observations are real simple. There's three takeaways that I was able to take from this. One, ILF rigs are the way to go. Carbon arrows are the way to go. And that elbow. After that, you know what? A lot of stuff works, and that was the beauty of it, and that's why I love traditional archery. You can see variety. The third lesson, sorry, correction, fourth lesson is do what works for you, All right? There you go. That's, the, that's what I came about. Maybe it'll help you. Maybe it won't, All right? But if you have an open mind, I think you can learn something from this. All right, everybody, don't forget to check out my website where you can find fantastic listings of archery clubs, competition bodies, competitions, archery festivals, courses, and of course targets by me, 3D Archery, and much more. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you next time with an all-new episode, Tread Archery 101. Still not going to use a bare bow. I like wooden bows.